Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of multi-level boost converter in MATLAB Simulink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you'll be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get into our topic for today. This is the circuit diagram of a multi-level boost converter. So we all know a boost converter is basically a device that is used to increase the DC voltage from one level to another. So the circuit has the resemblance of a boost converter up till this point and here you had a diode and then a capacitor connected but instead of that you have a capacitor and diode connected in this particular fashion in order to obtain multiple levels of DC output voltages that is why it is called as multi-level boost converter let us say if you are having a supply of 20 volt you'll be getting around based on the capacitance value 40 80 120 160 200 so you're getting various levels of output voltage with one particular circuit so how is this circuit useful for us so in case you're using devices that require 200 volt you can take a tapping from this point in case you're using a device with 120 volt you can take a tapping directly from this point so in that way it is really helpful rather than having five different circuits of boost converters so or changing the duty ratio corresponding to the voltage so you can have this circuit such that you can have different levels of tapping that is obtained as a result it is widely used in industries nowadays so what is the expected nature of output voltage waveform that we have to get so this is the nature of output voltage so level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 level 5 so all of these are DC voltages if you carefully observe However, the ripple is quite high. I will be in using a higher value of capacitance and I'll be reducing the ripple and I'll be show demonstrating in this particular video. So let's go to MATLAB and start our sim. Alright, here we are in MATLAB. So click on Simulink Library Browser. So we have an extraordinary feature that MATLAB has provided wherein we can search for the components that we want. At the first place, we'll be requiring a PowerQ block, which is basically the heart of our circuit. So it's the compiler of this particular simulation tool. If you don't use a PowerQ block, then it will be throwing you an error uh, during simulation. So be very careful with respect to it. We will be requiring a voltage measurement block. So add that as well. Once it is added, we'll be requiring a DC voltage source. Search for DC voltage source and uh, add the ones that are there in black because the ones that are there in blue are used for signals and systems and digital signal processing applications not that the other ones are used for power electronic they are used but popularly the black ones are used for power electronic and power systems application so add this block once this is done we will be requiring uh, a MOSFET switch search for MOSFET and add that block as well so this is uh, basically used as a switch. So use the ones that are there in black. We're not using a thyristor because we need an external commutation circuit to turn them off. In case of rectifiers and all, we'll be using thyristors because it will turn off during natural commutation. So once that is done, we'll be requiring a diode. So search for a diode and uh, add that block as well. So choose the ones that are there in black again add this block and uh, apart from that we will be requiring a scope in order to measure the in order to see the output waveform the nature of waveform that we are getting so search for scope and add that block we, we will also be requiring series RLC branch which is be basically converted to re resistors inductors and capacitors respectively based on your requirement so we have added the components that we want with respect to the circuit so we will be placing them in appropriate positions so that we can get started with the circuit connections power cube block is generally placed at the top so rotate the MOSFET in this particular direction ensure that the source is in the downward direction a lot of students make mistakes on that so disable the measurement port because we are not using them so I'll be connecting this across the DC supply in this particular fashion we'll be requiring an inductor to be connected in series with the circuit so let us choose an inductor value of about 100 milli Henry so exact design procedure how to design a boost converter I've explained in one of my previous videos so you can refer to that however I'm not going with an ex exact design I just wanted to to demonstrate you how to simulate this uh, with uh, suitable values of capacitors and inductors so once this is done uh, we will be requiring a diode so rotate the diode in this particular fashion ensure that it is in this particular direction and uh, we will be disabling the measurement port for the diode as well so connect this uh, at this point and ensure that it's connected uh, at this point and once that is done let us copy paste the diode so we'll be using nine diodes so uh, based on the number of capacitors and the diodes that are used the supply voltage uh, the output voltage levels will be decided let us say we are having 12 volt at the input then you have to get if you if you're using 9 or 10 capacitors for example if you're using 10 capacitors so 12 into 10 you have to get that is the maximum amount of output voltage that you can get so based on that we have to design the capacitor values as well so i'll be connecting another uh, diode in this particular fashion uh, so once this is done let me zoom out a little bit and copy paste these diodes and place them uh, one on top of the other so that it does uh, reduce some time during simulation 
once this is done we'll be requiring one more diode so let us place this right at the top over here so we have connected all the diodes with respect to the circuit now we will be requiring a capacitor so ensure that the capacitor value that is chosen will be same uh, with respect to there will be capacitors uh, that are available at this position and they will be available at the load as well so load capacitor values can usually be high uh, just to ensure that you will be getting a higher amount of output voltage based on that storage capacity so i'll be connecting the capacitor between these two points in this particular fashion once this is done copy paste this and place this uh, in this particular position again uh, leave some space between every two diodes connect the capacitors arrange them in this particular fashion you can copy paste two together as well and then you can paste that in the respective positions over here so again connect these two between these two points respectively in this particular fashion so once this is done let the uppermost diode terminal be open I'll be connecting another capacitor over there. So over here we'll be requiring capacitors as well. So connect this uh, at this point and connect this uh, at this point. Once this is done, let us now copy paste this capacitor. Again, we'll be connecting between two capacitors in this particular fashion. So again, copy paste these two diodes together, uh, sorry, th these two capacitors together and uh, let us start placing them uh, appropriately in this particular fashion. So again, there should be a tapping from the center point of the diode so after every two diodes we need to have this again i'll be connecting this between these two points and uh, the last diode that is there in the uppermost region will be connected to the capacitor of this terminal and it will be connected to this point once this is done you can measure the various levels of output voltage so we will be basically requiring five different voltage measurement blocks and we can all uh, like we can combine them and see them uh, in one particular scope but however in order to measure them we will be requiring five measurement blocks so i'll be connecting uh, them in this particular fashion first this will give you the voltage vc uh, that is with respect to the capacitor and uh, once that is done there will be another capacitor voltage that is to be connected between one of the upper terminals and ground so you have to short these two terminals that is negative can be shorted because they are all from the common terminal and you'll be getting uh, three times vc here again you can connect this to this point and you can get four times vc at this point and connect this uh, to the negative terminal and you'll be getting five times vc at this point so once this is done we can connect all of these to the scope so let us uh, ensure that the scope is very larger uh, in appearance so we can drag the this, uh, as far as possible so once that is done now let us start connecting the scope in this particular fashion so at the first place uh, this is the second voltage level so you can basically uh, come to this point and it will be showing the cursor in this particular fashion you can connect it at this point again you can connect this uh, over here uh, this is the third voltage level and uh, this is the fourth voltage level that we'll be getting connected over here and uh, scroll a little up and this is the fifth voltage level that we'll be getting so connect it at this point so once this is done i'll be changing these uh, load capacitor values so i'll be uh, choosing it to be a higher value so that the ripples will be as less as possible so choose the value of this to be equal to 1000 microfarad be consistent with respect to all the capacitors because the charging and discharging time plays a very important role in these type of circuits so we have to be very careful in choosing them so i am choosing these values to be equal to 1000 uh, micro and uh, you can try it out for different values as well but try to have it as high as possible so that the ripples at the output level will be very less so we will be requiring a pulse generator block as well so in order to trigger the mosfet so search for pulse generator and uh, add that block uh, in once that is done we will be uh, connecting it to the gate terminals and uh, i'll be entering the parameters with respect to pulse generator block the time period that i will be choosing is 1 divided by 50000 the switching frequency is basically 50000 in this case so you can uh, design it for different switching frequencies as well so with respect to pulse width let me choose the pulse width to be equal to 40% so you can try it for different values as well 40% indicates 40% of the time it will be turned on and 60% of the time it will be turned off you can try it for different values as well and accordingly change the value of inductor and capacitor respectively so once this is done so we have connected the circuit with respect to uh, the requirement we have to enter the dc voltage let us say we'll be entering a dc voltage of 24 volt so once this is done let us uh, set the simulation time to one second because these are static loads so we don't need a huge amount of simulation to take place in case you're connecting these to a motor then again you need a larger amount of simulation time now let us click on run it does take a lot of time to simulate 
so this is more than enough for uh, running the simulation you can stop the simulation at this point and now you can double click on the scope in order to see the nature of output waveform so you can click on this such that it uh, scales to the uh, window in this particular fashion up to the total simulation time in the circuit has simulated and if you carefully observe we are getting exactly the same amount of output voltage and the ripple that is there also is drastically reduced if you carefully observe the ripple that is there in each of these levels it is almost uh, equal to 0.5 or something like that so it's very very less and and this is exactly what we are supposed to get so uh, the amount of uh, the highest level of output voltage is also approximately equal to 10 times of the supply voltage around 240 volt or something like that so this is exactly what we're supposed to get however if you go on with an accurate design you will definitely get nine times the supply voltage uh, that is what is necessary with respect to the design procedure so i hope you were able to simulate the circuit in matlab and if you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting